Hickok 45, and I'm not even sure what firearm I have today. So I'm just gonna have to check and see if I even have a firearm. Oh, I do, look at that, I'll be darned. <laughs> yeah, man, I found one. Let's see if it'll go through paper. Ah, it does. Yeah, cowboy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I have. What's it say down there? Oh, yeah, it says M&P M2.0. 2.0 for short, all right? Sounds like a new computer program, doesn't it? Piece of software, all right? Otherwise known as an app these days. We used to call them computer programs. Yeah, I've got the new M&P uh, 9 millimeter. 2.0 m2.0 and we're going to shoot it some more been shooting it and i've had a lot of questions a lot of people have requested that uh, we get our hands on it and so uh we did all right so uh it's a pretty good gun it's been my estimation at this point okay i have not really i've not done many m and p's i've been remiss i guess we've done a couple and need to do more. This this firearm reminds me need to do more of these because uh, they do have a good grip. I recall when they came out that people were pretty excited. A lot of people that were in competition at the time went to them because they, they shoot well, they felt good. One of the criticisms has been the trigger. And uh, I mean, it's not the worst trigger that was, ever came along, but uh, they, they've caught a lot of criticism about the trigger. And that's one of the things they improved. The, the trigger is supposed to have a better, and you know, I don't have enough experience. I only have one around that I can compare it with uh, in the striker fired version. That's not, you know, double action only. I've got a police trade in, but uh, uh, it, it does feel better to me. Now, one of you or some of you who have a lot of M&Ps and you shoot them a great deal, maybe you even compete with them, you could give a better evaluation maybe of what you think of the of the newer triggers but my uh my estimation and impression of it is it is better it's a pretty crisp trigger and uh, the reset is is nice uh my only criticism of the trigger really is i mean the brake is fine you know i'm picky about triggers uh although i don't mind a heavier trigger like most people want the lightest trigger they can get i don't I, in fact, I prefer a five, six pound trigger on something like this, uh, but I want a crisp trigger. I don't want to know when it's going to break. That's, that's what I like in a trigger. I've told you before, I used to compete with a Glock 23. They had the New York trigger in it, you know, it didn't bother me a bit because it had a crisp break. Okay, that's what I like the most. But this is a, a fairly light trigger and it's got a pretty nice break. My criticism of the trigger, it might be my biggest criticism of this firearm, the biggest negative is uh, where it breaks because it it breaks back all the way back pretty much okay and then uh, you hear me say that uh occasionally because i have such a large hand for you it might feel great but it does break further rearward than you know almost all the way back so again it's that distance that i talk about that's a uh, oh it's a it's a thing that's not talked about a lot really but the distance between where the trigger breaks and right there is uh I keep saying I'm going to start measuring that and you know, talk about that more, but it's uh, it's a big factor if your hands are not you know small hands. If you have even average hands, I think it can be a, uh, an issue, but especially if you have large hands. So, so that's one of. But now I'm also by the same token, I'm accustomed to adjusting to the world, a normal size world. Uh, you know, because I'm a big old ugly guy, six eight. I have to adjust in, in every way. Okay, just like John. And so I have adjusted and my finger never matches the trigger very well. And I, I never use the pad of my finger. It's rare that I ever use that pad like you're supposed to and your trainer has taught you, right? Uh, so I'm reaching through the trigger anyway on every firearm. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm used to that, okay? Uh, but it is, a, it is a nice trigger, nice reset. I don't know if I can show you the reset. I'll, it's pulled there, I'll move this back. There's Homeland Security checking up on us again. That uh, so, so you can see that reset click right right there. So it's a short little reset. It's 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 a nice trigger. Okay, you won't find too many people criticizing the trigger. Now they might uh, tell you that like a what's well, it the wall or PPQ and there's some other uh, pistols that might have a 
slightly better trigger, but it's got a nice trigger now, and that's been one of the biggest criticisms of, of the Smith & Wesson M&P. What else did they add? They added some uh, serrations up here. You want to press check it, you've got, uh, you know, uh, serration. I, I don't know, it's a little bit awkward for me. If I'm going to press check, I just grab the back, but uh, you got those lower there. They're not really in the way. In fact, they're almost are so minimal, they don't help. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that's nice. I like the serrations on the M&P. You, know, you actually can get a hold of it. It feels good. There's friction there. Let's shoot it a couple more times. All right. Let's uh, back one in. Put it in my all do-all holster. Oh yeah. Feels good. What wants to get shot? How about that piece of clay pot right there? <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, he thought he survived. Ah, oh, boy. Yeah. There's some pot left there. Yeah, pot left to smoke. <laughs> I see some 11, oh, 12 ounces. Where do I get that? 11 ounces? Yeah. It's a good little shooter. Yeah. Feels pretty good. I should put a mag pouch on. Of course, I just have two magazines. Let's, oh, let's, let's get fancy. Since it's a Smith & Wesson, I think I can hit that thing. All right. Well, I've got it in my left hand. Let's go on. Shoot it to go on. All right. Try him again. All right. Let's quit while we're ahead. Let me try the red plate. <sighs> got to hold up on it. It's a nice sound. Let's try the middle red plate. That went high. I'm not sure where that's going. There we go. Actually, I was holding too high, maybe. Yeah, I was holding too high. I don't know. I thought I needed to hold higher than I was doing there. Let's try to pick off that little uh, pig above the buffalo. That'll tell me where to hold. And where not to hold. Well, I guess right there. Mm, she's empty. Uh, it has a nice trigger. And I... I typically uh, want a nice trigger if I'm going to start trying to pick off things or little things that I don't normally shoot at maybe with a polymer pistol so it's got a good trigger the sights are on uh, the shooting I've been doing I, I would have sworn and I and I do maybe the barrel seated up I don't know but I typically I like a six o'clock hold kind of in and with these sights and this arrangement you need to hold up on the target I've noticed a little bit and by the way, the sights and the dovetail and everything, I believe are the same as on the older models. And uh, as I understand from my reading, the uh, trigger guard configuration is the same. All your holsters that you've used for your other M&Ps will work. Your magazines from your earlier M&Ps will work. Um, some of the things they've changed, I may forget some of this or, or get some of it wrong. You M&P experts, you can uh, bail me out and, and chime in here. But uh, I think they added another grip panel now you've got four sizes small medium medium large and and large i put the large on here for this this video actually i was shooting with the medium too and i i don't know i think i probably like the large better it seems to help a little bit with that distance on the trigger brake i was talking about earlier uh but I, again i'm so accustomed to adjusting to normal size things that a medium grip on Glocks, I end up just putting the medium panel on those. I don't try to make them as big as I can necessarily. Some of the newer things, again, the, the serration up there I think is new. I believe the uh, perhaps the reversible mag release, okay, to make that ambi. The uh, ambi slide lock, I believe is new. I don't think that's on the others. And it's a, it's an ambi slide lock, yes. You know, you can you can lock the slide. You know, if you're a lefty, you could lock the slide just like I did there with no trouble, right or left hand. 
Now, it's not really an ambi slide release if you want to use it for that. Now, the right, if you're a righty, it is, you know, it's easy to release. But I've noticed with the left hand, I can't get that down at, at all because it doesn't really lock or latch on the right side. You know, it just latches on the other side, and this is just an extension of that. So, and it, unless you're a lot stronger than I am. So, if that's an issue, just so you'll know, because it locks right there, as you can see, it doesn't lock over there. Okay uh what else is different the uh now let me take it apart here real quick which is again one of the cool things about the uh m p you know it's simple to take apart the uh, rails up here are extended a little bit uh i've read i i guess it's that maybe that front part right there maybe that piece again i'll have one to compare it with but the rails are extended a little bit longer supposed to help with the torque and everything and the recoil of the, of the handgun so uh that was one of the changes uh okay, most of this is the same and what else uh it was different oh the the m2.0 is different it's not on the older firearms how's that for for a brilliant observation so you got your ambi slide uh, lock, release, uh, magwell, better trigger, your added uh, uh, grip panel. Oh, and, and I, the uh, stippling on that grip. That is pretty nice. That's been increased. And I will have to say that is done correctly. That feels good. You know, it's rare that I find a, a handgun, polymer handgun, modern handgun, that I don't want to wrap some grip tape around it of some sort, right? It's hard to find those. And uh, this one, it, it really, it doesn't need it. And uh, it, that's a lot for me to say, because unless you just like the feel maybe of the rubber grip tape better anyway, but uh, it doesn't need it. This actually, they've done something to this grip that is so unlike most grips. And I will compliment Glock too on their Gen 4 pistols. And I just got this out for size comparison. You know, what they do to it actually creates some friction also. It, it actually does but now many many of the uh polymer wonders out there they've got all these zigzags and weird stuff on the grip it does nothing it's still slippery to me okay but these are a couple and this is even better than the glock it actually has friction feels good you really lock into it okay uh so that's an improvement you, know, you got your rail um and that's stainless, by the way. Uh, they've got a you know special finish on it. I think the finish they're putting on it might be different. It, it's stainless. That's stainless steel, the, the slide. And it's some wonder, uh, something, uh, not melanite, some kind of night, uh, some kind of uh, uh, wonder coating. It's not tenifer. But anyway, it uh, helps protect that. And uh, also, you don't have to fire the gun. You notice I did when I broke it down. You can. I don't have a screwdriver out here. Uh, but you can, if you want to, well, let's break it, <laughs> shouldn't break it, but you can push down this little lever here, take down lever. Okay. Screwdriver is better than a pocket knife for that. And now it'll just go right off. I don't have to pull the trigger. All right. That's not a big deal to me. Some people, for some people, that is a big deal. I always use the magazine, push that back up. Uh, because, you know, I mean, if you're such a klutz that you don't know when that firearm is unloaded, you're about to break it down and you're afraid to pull the trigger. Uh, if there's any danger and you're pulling the trigger, you haven't checked it closely enough and are a thousand percent certain it's empty. I don't know, you might be a fool in a china closet with a firearm and dangerous to be around firearms to begin with. But anyway, it's got that feature, okay? Uh, so let's load up and shoot it a little more. Uh, we appreciate again the help from budsgunshop.com and uh, from Federal and uh, all the folks that help us out. It's uh, more help than we deserve, you know that. So uh, be sure you read our descriptions. We got all kinds of information in there and we update that fairly regularly whenever anything changes, okay? As I've told you before, I update all the descriptions at one time on all 1400 videos there is that capability within YouTube to do that, in case you didn't know that. I was certainly glad to discover that. And uh, we've got the link in there to the Hickok 45 uh, store now. You know, you guys have been asking for t-shirts and hats and all that for eight or nine years. We 
got right on it, you know. <laughs> only took eight or nine years to get that done. So keep uh, keep an eye on that. It's good. Uh, uh, you know, it's easy to get to and uh, easy to work. And uh, the outfit that we're working with seems to be doing a good job getting those out and everything. And we are going to keep a variety of things in there, keep it updated. So if you don't see something you like today, maybe you will tomorrow, okay, or next week. So that's uh, that link is always in the video description links to full 30 facebook I don't know if i've got instagram in there or not but uh you know if not i'll put it in next time twitter and all that good stuff so i just got two magazines again you know me it's hard to do a video with two magazines but and if i thought about it i, I didn't think i was at a gun show this weekend and i knew this farm was coming in i'd have probably picked up one or two here just so i could take a few more shots you wouldn't have to listen to me gab so much. Don't, that's why y'all like Glock videos so much. I can bring out all my Glock 19 videos or uh, magazines, and I don't ever have to reload a magazine. All right. Now, you notice that it, it kind of, like a 1911, kind of jumps in, but we've not had any malfunctions with it. Okay, we might have one now. Uh, I fired about 150 rounds uh, before the video, okay? And I uh, almost forgot, you know, anything that's happened, I like to... Uh, convey that before the video because I shoot it's rare that we ever just pull a gun out of the box I think we did that one time with a Glock 17 just just to do something different but we don't just pull it out of the box you know and do a video with it I shoot them uh, usually it's yeah well it could be anywhere from 50 to 150 or two or three hundred times depending on the firearm and if it maybe has a reputation for not being reliable or a lot of people have had problems with it then I might shoot it even more because I want to figure out what's going on with the with the firearm and, and not just rely on the video exclusively. Okay, and of course whatever we have is just one example of that firearm. But long story short, there we have not had any malfunctions with it yet. And I've been shooting uh, 115 grain and 124 and all that. <laughs> Fun. Up. <laughs> oh, this M&P is too powerful. Did you see that? Shot the plate right off. Actually, it was ready to go. I didn't know when it was going to go, but I knew it soon. That trigger feels good. If you like the M&P at all, you're going to like this one. You're going to like it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a pot that hadn't been hit. Yeah, hadn't been smoked. Hadn't been smoked. A bowling pin, too. What else? What else? What else? Cowboy. <laughs> hey, you know what? We ought to, I bet I don't have much ammo left. Two, two bullets. Let's put, let's try a pig over there with these two rounds. Yeah, no idea where they went. All right, we'll load up one more time. Okay, this is a, uh, uh, yeah, it's a popular firearm. Uh, again, I brought the Glock out just, just to make the Glock haters mad. You know, I am. Uh, just to give you an idea of the size, the Glock, you know, helps. Everybody knows the Glock 19. So that kind of tells you where it's, it stands in terms of size. The grip is about the length of a Glock 17. And of course, it holds so it's 17 rounds in a magazine. So yeah, it makes sense. So it's kind of a Glock 17 size uh, pistol in the grip, and uh, and then the barrel length and slide length is uh, I don't have the 17 out. It, uh, it, I think it's closer to the 19s because it's a four and a half. This is a four and a half inch. I think it's going to be available if it's not already in a what 4.6 inch and then five inch barrel, uh, nine, 40, and 45. Imagine that. So I don't know if the 45 is out there yet. Uh, I typically get the nines. Uh, we may do a 45 though. Get the big one in the 45 here sometime because I've not done the M&P in 45, um, and and really should. I don't know why I haven't done that because it is one of the premier pistols of the world. Has been for a good while, and a lot of people love them. And uh, now it's been improved. And uh, again, the trigger. 
I think, uh, again, I'm not an expert on the M&Ps, but I know uh, that uh, there's there's aftermarket companies that improve that provide uh, trigger springs and all that kind of thing to improve the triggers, and I think there there's a whole industry based around improving the uh, M&P triggers. I believe because it's been one of the, the negatives of the firearms. Okay, and uh, and now that's not to say that the Glock trigger is like perfect and that the M&P is not. Glock has produced some of the worst mushy triggers of all time. Uh, however, they have improved that over the years. I've noticed they're a little crisper these days than the Gen 4s, at least for my taste. But trigger's important. Need I say that? You want a trigger that feels good to you. And if you've got a good trigger, it's just amazing how much better that firearm will shoot. It just really is. Because I... Uh, I I would rather take a more of a six o'clock hold on the target with this, and I can't do that. I do I, maybe I don't have to hold up as high as I was thinking, but you do have to hold up on the target a little bit more. Uh, I would prefer to uh, hold a little bit lower, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try a pig again. <laughs> okay. Going high, yeah, okay. Okay. Let's try that turkey. All right, I'm taking more of the side picture I want, but I'm shooting 115 grain ammo. What the deal is there. All right, let's just try a buffalo or something over there. Mess around a little bit. Got him. Go back to Mr. Gong. Make sure he knows we're out here. And I know it's something we haven't done yet. Let's uh, let's put out several rounds in this magazine. Oh, oh, I don't know. On something, whatever I decide to shoot. It's a good shooter. It really is. And you know something I almost forgot before it gets dark on us here is I was going to shoot some hollow points. You didn't remind me. And that was going to be my last magazines. But I thought of it as I was shooting, as I was missing. Uh, these are uh, HST. Uh, the rounds I carry, in fact. HST plus P. Appreciate the, the ammo here. Actually, some of these I bought. I've bought over the years, and then uh, some have been furnished by uh, by Federal. And I'm not sure which is which, but uh, I have always liked the HST. So let's make sure it will feed a hollow point. These are 147 grain. And I guess since uh, it's carry ammo, I should carry first, right? I see a pot that didn't get smoked. So, let's take care of him. Yeah. <laughs> HST, smoked him. Looks like somebody tried to make a face on the cowboy. <laughs> Boom, put the last one on a swinging plate. Well, it appears to feed hollow points. And actually, I had tried them uh, before the video, too. And I shot a magazine. They worked fine. So, uh, the uh, M&P, popular ri uh, rifle, popular pistol. And uh, even before the upgrade, you know, it was, it was uh, well thought of by a lot of people. A lot of folks, they're, they're like me with Glocks. You know, I've got lots of Glocks and magazines. And, and, and that's one reason I'm not quick to change because it's just been my format for a long time, platform, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if I, I was telling John earlier, you know, it, the trigger breaks a little too far back for me to be ideal. But other than that, if I were in a shop and I had no polymer pistols, and I was trying these out for the first time to, to buy one and with 
whatever magically the shooting experience I have. But I didn't know anything about any of these. I hadn't had known one. I've been on another planet for the last 20 years shooting revolvers or something. Uh, I might come home with the M and P, and that might be my my pistol. I don't know. I mean, I uh, I'm not ready to switch over, but I'm not saying that. But it's a fine pistol. It is. It, it's not uh, gigantically thick. I have the calipers out here. I was measuring the uh, the slides frame here. It's essentially the same thickness on that Glock as it is this gun. This might be a little heavier, but it's not a lot heavier. Uh, so you don't have one of these big, uh, crazy thick slides to deal with that's not needed, you know, for a nine millimeter. Uh, and it feels good in the hand. It, it does obviously, it feels better than a Glock, generally speaking, you know, uh, in, in the grip and it shoots well. Uh, so it is, you know, it's understandable why a lot of people like the thing. So again, the negatives for me are the trigger, where it breaks, but the trigger's fine and once it breaks. And uh, I, just not a, lot of, not a lot to complain about with it. I guess that's the, the only real negative. Uh, I, could, uh, I, could, I could live with it if I had to. I, I really could. So nice combination, uh, nice upgrade, I would say. And uh, the M2.0 is, is a firearm that uh, I would have no trouble recommending. Life is good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that, because I know I sure did. Well, I've got you here. I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over at SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can be certified in gunsmithing, and you can also get an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they also do a lot of work with veterans. They accept the GI Bill. They also have hands-on experience, even though it's a distance learning program. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about them. Also, you can find them at sdi.edu. Uh, that's the Sonoran Desert Institute. And also, um, just want to let you guys know we have merchandise now. So if you want to uh, buy any Hickok 45 merchandise, you can go over to our store. The link is in the description of every video. And there's also a link kind of on the header of the uh, main uh, channel page, the, the, the main YouTube channel. And so we've got that. And also, if you want to find more of our content in other places, it's everywhere. Um, you can go to full30.com. We have uh, most or all of our videos over there. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45 Facebook. Um, you can find Hickok45 on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the real Hickok45 over there. And then also on Twitter is Hickok45. And then me, the son, the and son, John Hickok. You can find me at uh, Hickok45 and son on YouTube. I also do a podcast called Gun Culture Radio, which you can find on that YouTube channel and also on iTunes. And there's also a John Hickok Facebook page, which you can find the link to on the Hickok 45 and Son channel page. There's a link over there. And uh, that's all I can think of for now. It's a lot to digest. So you're going to want to think about that for a little bit and then watch one of these other videos that's like down there or over there somewhere because um, some of these look pretty good.